Yeah. No, up here. God? No, you idiot. It's Matthew Lillard. Why does your voice sound like that? It's a voice modulator. I wanted to sound more insidious. I see you're reviewing the Silver Edition. Hopefully you like it. I would not want to revoke your unlimited viewing access to without a paddle. Oh, please. Join the team. For I am Shaggy God! Hey team, this is the McGuire Review, and today we're going to take a look at a brand new product out of Beetle and Grimm. If you don't know who Matthew Lillard is, uh, he is an actor, and he is also into D&D pretty big. And he started up a company that uh, produces really cool Dungeons and Dragons campaign experiences. So if you play D&D and you want to enhance your campaign or your experience, Beetle and Grimm does produce really awesome uh, enhancements to your campaign where you can buy these kits that will give you extra materials, will give you little trinkets, will just give you all kinds of cool stuff to really give you the best experience that you possibly can with your campaign. Now, these are designed uh, to go specifically with certain campaigns that are out there. They did a Platinum Edition, and we'll talk about what these different editions mean in just a minute. They did a Platinum Edition on Waterdeep. This is their Silver Edition for Saltmarsh. That's what we're going to unbox today. And they do have a brand new one that is a Platinum Edition. they got a teaser out right now on the website. You can find the link to the website in the description below, which is called Descent to Avernus. It's for that new D&D campaign, and they got a Platinum Edition coming out for that. So the difference between these editions, this is the silver. It comes at a lower price point, $175 for what we're going to go through right here. Their Platinum Edition is kind of the primo uh, experience if you want to run your group through that. That comes at a $500 price point. Now, and I'm going to put this down. You may be thinking to yourself, that's really expensive. And you wouldn't be wrong there because $175 for some add-on stuff for a campaign is expensive. $500 is very expensive. What I think you have to look at is what you're getting for that campaign and how it's enhancing the experience you're going through in that campaign. And we're going to see just the quality and how cool some of the stuff is inside of here. I have not looked yet. We're going to do a true unboxing and we're going to get into this and see what our quality is at the $175 price point. You can also think about this as if you have a gaming group, which generally is four to five people, and you're going to go into a new campaign, maybe everybody throws in a little bit of money and the DM goes out, kind of pulls the money together, gets one of these sets to go with the campaign, and then everybody can kind of contribute and it's not just all on one person or the DM to supply something that will enhance the campaign for all the players. So I really do see this as something that, you know, a whole group can pitch in on and that's how you kind of get to your price point and then it's not, it's not so bad. Because I know it is expensive and maybe some shy away from that because it is a little bit more pricey, but you're really, I believe from what I've seen, really getting your value and we're gonna tell right now if the Silver Edition delivered or not. This is for Salt Marsh. Let's get in to the Silver Edition on Salt Marsh, all right? This has not been opened at all. As you can see, we are going to do a complete unboxing. This is definitely the way that I wanted to do this, I'm very careful as I cut this open as I don't want to slice anything inside of there. And I also think that it's important to have right on camera just how this is packaged because at $175 for this product, I think packaging is very important as well to make sure it gets to the customer in good condition. The first thing I'll call out is this is a very thick cardboard box. This has got some, um, this has got definitely some stiffness to it. It's a very thick cardboard box. It is very heavily wrapped in bubble tape inside and that's all you're going to find in the box so we'll, and that is pretty heavy so we'll set that out which tells me there's a lot of stuff in there that's already making me feel good about the value uh, we're going to actually you know what bear can you hold this for a second for us all right thank you you can just take all right okay we're going to take this and throw it right over here all right now we're going to get this open and as you can see some nice bubble tape, uh, bubble wrap, all the way around that. And what do we have here? This looks pretty cool. 
All right, we have a kind of a burlap sack here. This is really awesome. It says Salt Marsh Trading Company. That's already very cool. Excellent presentation right out of the box uh, in this little bag here. How awesome is that? We're gonna set that here and get this out of the way. And now we are ready, team. Okay, before I go any further, uh, I feel like I need to mention this is going to obviously be a massive spoiler if you are a player and you know that you're going to be going through the Salt Marsh campaigns with your group and you also know that maybe your DM or your group threw in on this. You're probably not going to want to watch the parts of this video when we get deep into everything that's in this box. I am not an expert on what every single piece or item in this box is. So some of those things I will leave. Some things I do know what they are, and I'm just not going to call them out because I don't want to spoil that. We will, however, look at everything that's in this box from a quality perspective um, just to make sure that the $175 value is definitely there. So far, I'm feeling really good about this. All right, On their website, when you purchase these, there is a spoiler and a non-spoiler edition of these as well. So everything that we're going to see today, you can actually go right to their website uh, for the for the most part, most of the things that are in here and see right on the website in the spoiler edition. And that's for more of the DMs to see what they're getting. Okay, so let's get this bag open. It is a good size bag, so it's much larger than the actual product or box that's inside, which is pretty cool. And obviously you can use this bag, reuse it for lots of different... Oh, that looks great. You can re... And it's got a really good, nice um, coating on it as well. You can use these for about anything you want. Maybe you want to keep everything for your campaign in there and uh, kind of satchel this up and carry things around. Maybe you do just want to keep it uh, for protection uh, on the box there. So let's get the box open. We're going to get our cutter out of the way. Let's put this right down here. Spin it around. Salt Marsh Trading Company, you can see there, with an awesome, that awesome kind of anchor logo. Very cool so far. Box has got a really nice feel to it. It's got good artwork. I like the um, kind of the, the undersea sort of look they give there, which what looks like maybe some merfolk or something that's swimming through the water. It's what it kind of looks like. Then you got the Beetle and Grimm's logo. And the Sinister Silver Edition is what this is called. And it's the Ghosts of Salt Marsh kit, which recently they just released the new D&D book, The Ghosts of Salt Marsh, which is actually a collection of a lot of older D&D um, naval and water-based scenarios, some of the most famous that they put in the new book, kind of updated some of them, added some new stuff. It was pretty awesome. I got that as well. We might do a video on actually going through uh, that D&D book and what it has to offer. We do have um, some artwork here on the back. You'll see there. And other than that, the box... Um, that, that, that's really it, right? That you're going to find on the box, right? Got your Wizards of the Coast and Dungeons and Dragons partnership logos right down there. Okay, let's get into the box. Bear, I'm going to keep this out of the way so I do not block you. That would be a foul. All right, let's put this right here. Let's see if that is stand up on that burlap bag. Probably not. So let's put, put that there. Let's put the burlap bag out front. That way we got a nice view of everything and we can use this bag here to uh, kind of set things on as it comes out. All right, first thing right off the top is the Ghosts of Salt Marsh. This is just kind of a, um, looks like more of a uh, an introduction. So this is what this is. Uh, Dear Brave Adventurer, there's a little something there they read out to you for kind of a thanks for, for purchasing this. And then you're going to get a contents, what's in this box. And this will tell you all the things that we're going to get in the box. And then on the back, they've got some credits with some other uh, merchandise you can purchase through their website. Looks like some various different shirts. I actually might go pick up one of these Beetle and Grimm shirts. It's pretty cool. Their logo is like this guy boxing a uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex. I don't know. It's pretty cool. Okay, what's in the box? We got the book, the DM screen. Oh, excellent. A custom DM screen for Salt Marsh. So, so cool. Uh, we've got a sailing ship maps. We got special player mats or maps. We got player handouts, custom jewelry. Very sweet. Encounter cards, pre-generated characters, nice, I'd like to see that, seafaring encounter guide, the box itself, which is super cool, and then the burlap bag, which we have right here, okay? And then it says basically enough talk, let's get into it. All right, so we're going to set that right there. So right off the bat, we're going to get some um, various different types of notes. 
And again, this is designed, and these kits are designed for specific campaigns. This one's designed for the Ghost of Salt Marsh, obviously. However, that doesn't keep you from, from purchasing something like this. And then as you run your own adventures, as you run, you know, whether they're C-based or not, you could always reuse these components and these little notes for various different things. Now, they are going to be designed specifically for certain things and parts of the campaign, but they're definitely reusable. If you get a little creative, in my opinion, you can reuse these things for lots of things. So very high quality um, paper. It does very much give you the feel that this is old, crinkled up. It's taken on water damage. It really does have the right texture and feel that you would you would think that it would have. And this just has various different, it says attack, stop, lift, there, magic, we don't know, gold, silver. So this is gonna be something that the players are more than likely going to find, and this is gonna be some type of clue they're gonna to need to use for something in the campaign. So you can see already how it's, it's nice these components are giving you maybe some of the things you would have to take a bunch of notes on or the things that you'd have to write down. You now have a physical relic that is a group you can have sitting out on the table or passing around. Same thing here, same uh, look and feel. This one actually looks like it took on even more water damage. It's even harder to read. Very, very difficult to read this. Some words I can't even read at all. And that's going to be the mystery. More than likely you're going to have to solve is what this is about. Okay. Oh, really nice here. Um, and I do believe that it was, yeah, it, it was packaged this way on purpose. So even the care and the detail of like these pages, how they're kind of turned over and crinkled in and it, it just really, really nice production value. Excellent on these. We'll keep setting these out here. So cool. Okay. I'm getting pretty excited and we're only at the notes. All right. So uh, again, here's another one. We'll just kind of keep these coming out. And then here is a final one. There may be more in there. We'll see. Um, and it's kind of the same type of thing. This one looks like it has much less of water damage. It's more of an old kind of parchment feel. And that is interesting how they were able to kind of create different types of textures and feels amongst these papers. They do feel like the same type of paper, but maybe a different maybe a different thickness or grade. But whatever they've done to the paper, coated it with... It, it, they do feel different. Like I would say this one here feels much more like an old piece of parchment paper. This one has more of a almost, I don't want to say slimy because it's not slimy, but it's like, it's, it's much more of a moisture ridden type, uh, type feel in paper. It definitely has a different feel and that adds a lot to the theme of your game and the environment of your game as you're going through those campaigns. <clears throat> love it okay this artwork looks sick we're gonna set this aside we're gonna get into this right here because it looks like there's some little um some little relics that we might be getting here and some awesome artwork so let's i'm gonna go ahead and open and open this bag here it's kind of a hard it looked like a soft plastic all right uh, a little tough there all right so here is a some form of a medallion looks like and i'll put it back in that bag so let's set that over there it looks like it comes with kind of a leather um holder here where you, you know you could you, I, I guess you could put that on put it around your wrist um you know wear it however you wanted to do that it is a, a shark it's got a shark on it and bear will hit the overhead cam here pretty soon once we get most of the stuff out take an overview of all these things up close but you can see that shark medallion there it's got that uh, just a standard, looks like a great white type shark on it. And then on the back, uh, it looks like it's got, I don't know, maybe some coral or a shell or, or something. But it's it's a really nice high quality. It's got some weight to it. Nice engraving. Um, good smell. You know, it's got, it's got it all. Okay, we're going to put that right there. Uh, over here, we have a pin. This is a double clasp pin. Uh, again, nice and heavy, about as heavy as this medallion here. And it is a standard pin. It's kind of got a swirl type um, symbol on it there. Uh, and it's a double, double headed pin, be, uh, probably because of the weight of what this actually weighs. Says so maybe it's something that a player gets. They can pin that on. Some, some type of sigil. It's pretty awesome. Okay, so we'll put that right there. All right, let's get into this pack. Throw that out. And here we got a bunch of just really cool artwork. So 
these are going to be designed let's see what we've got inside here it says um okay so this is pretty much indicating to and i'm not going to show this so this is pretty much indicating the uh the artwork here who it's by the artist and then the location so i'll just read off this one like here for instance this piece of artwork and what these are for is and we'll show this when we get the dm screen out when the dm screen is out there will be various different types of uh monsters and artwork we'll get to that right here oh this looks so cool uh there'll be various different types of things that you'll hang over the top of your dm screen that will hang down for your players to be able to view this way as you're going through painting the picture uh, let's say for instance this environment here we have two large lobsters that are battling at the bottom of the sea and you know, maybe they're doing that for one reason or the other. Or maybe you have to get into the middle of that. Who knows? And then it will actually tell you right here on the back. It'll say chapter 6, page 65. That will um, allow you to know exactly where in this adventure you would want to be displaying that artwork. And that would be uh, to display to you as a player. Right? So that's what these are going to be for. And there's tons of awesome artwork. That shark is really awesome. We have got... Oh, these are so cool. All right, um, you know, nice high color artwork that you can see there. Um, very nice high color stuff. Good high quality. I would say these papers are, you know, it's more of a thickness of what your your high quality print sort of um, coated paper would be. That's probably the thickness of what you're going to find here on these pieces of paper. I wouldn't say these are things that I would just, you know, I mean, they definitely could rip. So you're going to want to be careful with them, but they, they are a higher grade than just your standard piece of paper by far. Um, we'll continue the artwork there. You can see all the different types. Here's some ocean artwork. Pretty awesome. Um, this is cool. Kind of a what looks to be maybe a, a Kraken-type character sort of breaking into the bottom of a, of a ship there. So lots of different types of artwork. All, all look very, very good. Okay. Then what we'll do is we'll get into this right here. This is going to be the monster artwork. So let's look at our monster artwork. Okay, this is a great, great component. Okay, this, this is very, very usable. So what you're going to find here is, and we'll look at this one here because it's just an awesome piece of artwork. You're going to find the artwork on the front, and every single one of these are going to be the same. And you can see just how many of these you're you're getting, Okay. You're getting you're you're getting a you're getting a ton of these, so you'll be able to see the artwork right on the front, and then what you're going to get is on the back all of the stats that you would need as a DM to, you know, take damage, attack with this this creature, interact with your players with this creature. All that information is going to be conveniently displayed right here on the back of this card for you as a DM, and every one of these follow that same approach as our artwork does here, where it's kind of broke into kind of an A-frame type setup. And you'll be able to put that right over the top of your DM screen, showing that to your players of what they're interacting with. You know, I mean, you could even maybe set it out on the table if you wanted to, once there was no surprises. Um, and then on the back, but it's really designed to hang over the DM screen. And then on the back, again, you're going to have all the stuff that you're going to need as a DM. Th these are fantastic. I absolutely love these. And uh, it's the same way, right? Like here's here's an example of maybe a monster fighting fighting characters versus just the monster on there. The artwork here is just absolutely insane. These look so awesome, and I love I love the white awesome goblin there. I love the white background and design they went with versus sort of you know here we got the full color. I think that makes sense when you're talking about displaying an environment, right? You want color edge to edge. When you're talking about displaying just a monster that you're battling, I like that they went with the single monster silhouette on the white background because then it kind of isolates that monster and, and it focuses you in on just like, this is what I'm taking on, and your eye doesn't get lost sort of in a painted uh, entire environment. Um, I think whenever, well, it's interesting. Even these, they got a little further, but they're still kind of rimmed in white. It's and we'll, let's take a look really quick because I think what they've done here design-wise is, and I'm seeing this whenever you're interacting with an individual monster, it's individual silhouette on the page. Whenever you're interacting with a monster and, they, and it's more of like an action scene, 
then they're building it out. They're still giving you that white rim, but they're building it out with a little bit more artwork. And I think that makes sense, right? That's that's kind of like what they do here, taking the artwork all the way to the outside. So I, I'm good with that. That makes sense. Um, and again, these are super high quality. Every single one of them are going to come in the same fashion where you're going to get uh, the things that you need on the back as a DM to uh, enter. Oh, look how cool this is. <laughs> that's that's awesome oh oh so cool the artwork is just absolutely fan oh look at this look at that one i can't stop i can't stop look at this merfolk so cool oh the red toad oh it just keeps getting better and better all right i'm gonna stop because we got to get on to other uh, other things in the box but you can just see how awesome the artwork is on these cards oh man so good so good all right so let's let's find a really cool one here to put on the ooh this one's pretty sweet we'll put this one uh we'll put that one there right on the top all right it looks like this here one big pack all uh together um and we're gonna leave the dm screen for last uh, there's a dm screen i think one other thing that's in there so let's uh let's get this open here okay this is all uh, trimmed up together and I will set, oh, there's all kinds of things that came out of there. So I will set that down. And let's hit this, the the Sea Ghost. Uh, this is going to be your ship map. And wow, this is a very thick, high quality mat. Okay? Look at that. Look at the shine that you get off of that. It's a very, very high quality, thick mat. I mean, this is, it's 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 hard to even call this paper. This is more like almost like if you took a thick paper and completely laminated it this is a really really thick mat now i do think um after you get it laid out flat on a table it's already it's already laying out pretty flat and that's kind of sitting on everything i think once you got this out on a nice flat table i don't think you'd have any problems with the creases um, you may have to put a little weight on it for some of these creases but it's not bad because I don't know if they did this specifically on purpose or not, but it does look like a crease goes right down the center of, of spots. There's no creases that are going across the middle um, that I can see. There's no creases that are going across the middle of a space, so you should never have problems, even if there is a crease, with setting a miniature on either side. So high level of uh, attention and detail there. And you can see you've got uh, the top part here with the ship. Let's see what we got over here. Uh, we've got a scale right here. One square is one five foot. And then we've got a doorway, open uh, porthole, closed porthole. So that's kind of indicating the different um, things that we're going to find on this ship. There's our legend. And on the back here, the, this is going to be different uh, areas of the ship. So not only do you have kind of up top on the sea, you've got sort of the bottom of the ship, and you also have different decks and layers of the ship as you kind of go down through that ship um, as you're playing as a player so pretty awesome that is that is very cool i love that and now we've got again some more of these uh, note type things these are a little bit different these are more i would say like a thick standard piece of paper uh, but obviously they're they're you know they've got some nice print on them to make them look a certain way all right, we're not going to hit a lot of this because, um, I don't know, these things might be some real big spoilers. So let's just, we'll go through these pretty quickly. Again, you can see they are nice parchment. They're nice and thick. Um, and they do have some feel. This one actually has a little bit of a, little bit of a texture to it. Uh, this one does as well. It's got a little bit of a texture to it. This one has a little bit uh, different. This is kind of a map, looks looks like sort of like a hand-drawn-out map. This one's really cool. I can't wait to see what that all what that all brings. And then we have a certificate of achievement. Uh, so this is going to be some type of certificate that you're going to get signed by various folks in, in that area. And I'm sure that's going to be something that the players would get once they achieved you know, something within uh, this specific campaign. And that's something we'll get into a little bit deeper here. I did mention this, the Ghost of the Salt Marsh standard D, D book that was released there is a book that is in here as well that is specifically designed for everything that you have here and then obviously you can use all of this stuff with your adventures in the other you know more traditional D, &D ghost of salt marsh book as well but 
There are adventures that are specifically designed. We'll hit that book here in a second. More of these uh, papers here, various different things your players are going to come about and be able to be given. This looks pretty awesome. This is a completely different type of paper um, versus something like this or something like this. This has got much more of a waxy, uh, almost like a wax paper type feel. Uh, and it has kind of a treasure. Well, I don't know if it's a treasure, but it's a it's a map that's drawn on it. we got a, a shark down here. And then on the other side, it's just plain and blank and looks sort of weathered and, and old. All right. This is the bonus encounters. So we've got bonus encounters here as well as what is in with that encounter. So as you're playing out your campaigns, obviously they've added in some pre-generated encounters, which is pretty cool. You've got the high seas. Um, here's a here's another one, human sorcerer, uh, halfling rogue. Oh no no no! These are the pre these are the pre-generated. Um, well, the bonus encounter, the high seas. This is a this is a bonus encounter. So let's set. I'm running out of room here. Let's set this here. These are your pre-generated characters. We got a human sorcerer. We got a halfling rogue. We got a half elf ranger. We got a half elf druid. And I'll show you really quick just what these look like. They are printed on a really nice, um, you know, I would say again, a, a thick, coated, high quality print paper. It's going to give you um, all the information you're going to need for that pre gen character, your background, all of the uh, stats that you're going to need, uh, various different features, and the equipment that you're going to start with. And then again, when it comes to spells and whatnot, you're going to want to track that on a piece of paper or with D&D Beyond, how, you know, whatever your whatever your flavor there is, you'll track those uh, yourself on paper. But this is going to give you sort of everything you need for that pre-gen character. Half-Elf Druid, very glad to see that they put a Druid um, in here. And then we've got a couple Elves, a Ranger and a Druid. And then we've got the classic Lizard Folk Barbarian. you got to have the Lizard Folk if you're going to have somewhat of a water slash uh, naval adventure. Got to have your lizard folk. Very nice. And it's a barbarian. That's super cool. Here is a map of a various layer that you're going to run into. It is double-sided, both level one and level two. Let me get those out of there. And put these over here. Oh, here is another map of that layer. Here's level three. And uh, there's a standard, a standalone layer that's on that side. So we'll put all those over here. So you can just see so far how much is 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 out here on the table. This is this is unbelievable. Bear, why don't you load up the overhead video and let's start getting some close up on some of these awesome uh, coins and and pins and some of the paper, and we'll look at some of the artwork as well. Kind of move that around. The skull dunes. You're gonna have a real nice thick mat here. Representing the Skull Dunes, probably something that you're going to have to explore. There, they got the smaller squares you'll be going through, and uh, it does. I was, that's what I was looking for was the the scale. So one of these squares is 150 feet. You can see there, so it's going to be quite a bit to kind of travel around this area as you're going on your adventure. Here we have the actual Ghosts of Salt Marsh book. This is Chapter One. Chapter 2, here is chapter 3, 4, 5, and 6. Again, this is the custom version of Ghosts of Saltmarsh, specifically designed for everything that you have here and that experience. Amazing. But again, this is all cool stuff that can be reused. Okay, Here is going to be chapter 7. I love how these books are designed, and I like that they broke them up like this. That's actually really cool that they made separate books instead of just putting everything in one giant book. Here's the Ghosts of Saltmarsh appendix. Um, let's let's look in here real quick. Uh, let's see, of ships in the sea. Okay, so this is just going to be a lot of things you're going to need as you go through um, officers and crews, types of ships, how ships work, upgrading ships, a lot of probably the extra stuff that you're going to need or rule uh, additions you're going to need as you go through. There's also uh, giant coral snake, giant uh, sea eel. So there's there's monsters that are in here as well, and they're, uh, they're tables. So you'll find that in this book. And then let's just jump into this one real quick just to get a flavor. I love the, uh, the artwork they got there on the front. That's very cool. 
that's a really cool piece. Um, so let's get into this. And you can see there, got some nice high color artwork. These are very similar to what you would find in a traditional D&D &D adventure book. They, it looks almost identical. It's got, um, you know, the various different pieces of artwork along with the adventure hooks and what's going on along with, uh, you know, different tables to set up scenarios, fishing, trading, smuggling, mining, different things that you can do in the game. Here's some awesome maps of salt marsh. That is sweet. Look at how cool that map is. Let me uh, show that again. That's a really, uh, that's a really cool, really cool map there. Salt marsh, you can see. Very awesome. Okay, that's what your books are going to look like. They're all going to be the same. They're going to follow that same format. So it's going to be very familiar if you're used to uh, playing D and D and buying those uh, standard larger adventure books. Let me. I want to do the DM screen last because I'm 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 really excited about that. I'm kind of anxiously waiting myself, uh, and just sort of uh, you know, it's always good to save the best for last, right? I don't know. Maybe it's the best. Maybe it's not. So uh, here is uh, the styes. So this is a full merchant's quarter, high quarter. This is awesome. So here is going to be the over the overall um, map here. So you can see that, and it, this is printed on a really nice uh high quality paper as well it's very thick I, it's definitely different than what we had here with our ship here and mainly because this is something that's going to go out on the board this is something that you're going to be touching and moving characters around on and, and interacting with much more so it needs to be more durable than something like this that's going to be sitting out on the the table you're going to be deciding i mean you, you might set miniatures on like oh okay we're over here but you're not going to be, um, you know, interacting with this as much as you would something, you know, a battle map, something like this. So this map is still a pretty thick, this is almost a, it's a very different paper than anything I think I've run into so far. Um, it's more of, a, again, that thicker sort of, it's not a slick, it's more of a very dull matte uh, wax coated type paper. And you can see that there. And then on the back, we've got an entire the temple, uh, land, landgraves folly. So you can see here, there's an entire uh, setup here on the back as well that you're going to be using for part of that adventure. And it looks like there's there's you know there's different rooms, there's different things that you can interact with and do on the back side of this map. Okay, that is going to be the final map and the final component outside of the sweet dm screen and you know what they didn't need to add this in but they did and i'm glad that they did they went with a custom designed ghosts of salt marsh beetle and grims dm screen you can see the DD symbol right there you got the beetle beetle and grims right there really cool artwork i like the style here uh, of this this looking guy um really cool artwork it's it's your traditional four um uh, or no one two three one, two, three, four. Yes, your traditional four panel uh, fold out DM screen. And we'll take a look at this here. We've got the Ghosts of Salt Marsh. And these custom designed DM screens, look at the artwork across the front. They are really set up to give you as a DM everything that you're going to need uh, readily available for you. That's the purpose of these these DM screens. And whenever, whenever I run campaigns, I really like to use these style DM screens. Getting a nice wooden one is cool, but frankly, I probably would set this right behind the nice cool wooden one. Gives you all the stuff that's that's most important for you as a DM, readily available on the back of this. So let's look at what this one gives you. Some things on the warship, all right? Ships, how ships work, uh, how they're crewed, how they're manned, all of that is going to be inside of here. We've got long ship, different type of ship, the hull, that's interesting, okay? Random encounter tables. We got coastal monsters, swamp monsters, underwater monsters, swimming. How does swimming work if you were to fall off a boat and go into the water? That's going to be right here. Keel boat, different actions for that. More on swimming. Um, crashing, when boats crash. We got the sailing ship, some things on crashing. Crash damage, underwater visibility. That's going to be important when you're swimming around. You got the rowboat. Underwater encounter distance, underwater combat. Gonna have some underwater combat, trust me on that one. Storm DCs, so when you run into storms and you're out uh, on your boats, 
various different types of boats. What's that's gonna what what is that gonna look like? Uh, storm checks based on the role that you're playing: captain, first mate, uh, quartermaster, right? Different types of roles that you can play. Storm check results, and then it's gonna give you the results based on you know how you roll against those checks. And the last one here is quick ship names. So here are the various different names of the ships over their campaign and they're right here so you can have those for reference as well because you'll need those as you're talking about the various different ships moving from ship to ship uh, maybe exploring ship to ship you know whatever this awesome curated D, D experience is going to be giving you okay so that is beetle and grimm's silver edition of ghosts of salt marsh i'm gonna have to say honestly team i feel like for me the $175 value is definitely here. We've never reviewed on the channel a Platinum Edition, so I can't speak for that one. I have seen videos on them. The uh, Waterdeep one that they did, it seemed pretty awesome. There was a lot more of you know these types of relics and, and things that you would get outside of just the paper and the artwork. But again, there's a price point difference there between the $175 Silver Edition and the $500 Platinum Edition. Um, so, you know, I would expect to have more of these actual limited run manufactured items. And again, these are going to be limited run. You're not just going to be able to go anywhere and buy these things. If you want these types of things, you want these relics for your campaigns, for this one, for other ones, again, because you could reuse these things, you're going to have to get them here, right? That's just kind of, that's the way that that's going to work. It's part of what they're offering to you. Uh, as a customer, if you purchase one of these, one of these fantastic uh, experiences in a box, really, that's what it is. It, it's a it's a D and D experience in a box. That's what it is, plain and simple. So, team, check this out. Beetle and Grim, go to their website, see what they got to offer. Check out some of the new ones. Check out this one. They do only run these generally for so long. They do sell out of them, so they are things that are kind of hot when they're produced and you want to get your hands on them if this is something that you're going to be highly interested in, okay? It's a big time thumbs up from me. This is awesome. Beetle and Grim, well done. So hit that like, click the subscribe below to join the team. Keep rolling them grits. This has been the McGuire Review, and we'll see you next time, Bear. Let's roll.